you doing? I'm CK with Under Pressure Performance, and today we're going to be showing you how to do an install of one of our G8 uh, fuel systems. And it's a pretty simple, straightforward install. Um, we actually already got it on, installed on this G8, so what we're going to do is just walk you through, kind of show you how the uh, uh, layout of the plumbing is in that, and that way it's really easy for you guys to just follow along and simple and set it up. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tap into the, uh, the fuel system. Now, we're over here on the passenger side um, on the rear of the fuel tank, and you can see right here we've tapped in. So we just did, in the back corner, on the inside corner of the fuel tank, you see we drilled a, uh, a hole and then tapped it with a quarter inch NPT tap. Now when you tap it with the NPT taps, it's important to note that the taps are actually tapered. So the more you put the tap in, the bigger the hole's gonna get. So you don't wanna just take and run the tap all the way in on this thing. You wanna kinda run it in a few threads, then test it, see if the fitting fits, run it in a couple more. Um, once the fitting starts screwing in about two or three turns, that's it, you don't wanna go any more. From there, you wanna go ahead and um, use some Teflon tape on it to seal it up, and then go ahead and screw it in. All right, now the first line that we're gonna attach is gonna be our 50 inch in length, it's a dash six line. It's got a 135 on one side, and the other end is gonna be a straight. We're gonna attach the 135 back here to the tank, and then we're just gonna loop this right around the tank here. And come up and what you can see what we're going to do is start following the uh, the factory fuel lines here so that 50 inch line is going to end with the straight on this side then we're going to have our fuel filter then it's a double female 6an union into our uh, 6ant then another double 6an union and then this here is going to be the 6 to 10 uh, reducer that goes into the pump um, from there we're going to come out of the pump with our reducer on the other end, that's gonna go back into a 6AN. All right, now coming out of the pump, we're gonna go, this is gonna be our 106 uh, inch line. It's got a 45 degree on this end and a 90 on the other end. We'll show you that in just a second. And what we're gonna do is run this back up here under the heat shield and kind of mirroring the factory lines and we're gonna go, as you can see right up there, toward the back of the firewall. All right, and you can see on the fuel line's coming up the back side, right next to the firewall above the engine. It's just going to come right around here to the driver's side and wrap around. And then that feed line is going to come down and it's going to tee, I'm sorry, it's going to tie right into the side of the regulator here. Um, and we went ahead and just bolted up and mounted the regulator with the bracket over into the uh, fender well area here. Now this one's set up a little bit different on this car because um, he's got some vacuum pumps. He's done a little bit extra different stuff on this as well as he's got it set up as a full return system. Um, this can be set up as a full return system or not a full return system, but you have to modify your uh, existing stuff. Uh, if you guys have any questions about that, just hit up our tech department. We can get you taken care of and what you need to do to switch it over to a uh, full return style system. So normally when it comes out of the uh, regulator here, it's gonna have a check valve on it and it's gonna have a 6AN that goes into the check valve and then coming out of the check valve is actually gonna be a 4AN. From there, it's gonna have our 90 degree bend and this switches over to a 4AN line and that's just gonna come right down and plug into the existing factory fuel rail there there's actually a 4AN uh, JIC fitting right on the front of that. Now that does have a Schrader valve in it, which is like a, basically a, uh, a tire valve. Um, just use a regular Schrader valve remover. We'll go ahead and pull that out. That way this has no trouble feeding uh, the fuel right into the rail there. All right, now for the fuel return, we're gonna come out the bottom of the regulator. That's again gonna have a 6AN to 6AN uh, male fitting. And that is going to go right into, um, this is gonna be our, actually the return line is gonna be our longest uh, of the dash six lines. This is 120 inches long. It's got a 135 degree bend here. And it's gonna come out of there. It's gonna basically just go right alongside with the fuel feed that we had coming up earlier. And that's gonna trace it across the top of the engine and go right back down. And uh, we'll show you what that looks like here in just a second back on the bottom side where we retie it back in. All right, and now we're coming from up above from our regulator, the bottom side there. Um, as you can see, this line is mirroring the fuel feed line that was going up that we ran earlier. That again is just gonna come right down under here behind this heat shield. Again, mimicking the factory fuel lines. And that line is gonna come back here and we're gonna, the 90 degree end is gonna go right on here where the T is and that's gonna dump it in right before the fuel pump. So the excess fuel from the regulator will just get dumped right back in pre-fuel pump. Okay, now for, there's different types of fittings that we have on here, um, all over the kit. Obviously the one that ties into the tank is gonna be uh, what we call it NPT, it's a national pipe thread. That gets Teflon. Um, the rest of them are gonna be AN or ORB. So this here is an ORB fitting, and this here is an AN fitting. Um, the ANs have the taper on it, the ORBs do not. Aside from that, they are actually the same. So 
Whenever we're using an ORB fitting, which is going to be basically going in and out of the check valve, going in and out of the fuel pump, and then all three connections that we make going into the fuel pressure regulator, we call those ORB fittings. Um, they can be an AN, so they may have the taper on the end, but the way it seats is not actually tapering uh, against anything in the bottom there. Therefore, we're going to use a Teflon washer on it. So it'll actually sit on there and screw in like that, and then we'll tighten it up. And the seal is actually made with a Teflon washer. So again, on both connections that were going on the fuel pump itself, all three connections on the fuel pressure regulator here, and then both of the connections on either side of our, our uh, check valve here are gonna be all sealed up with an actual Teflon washer. The rest of them that actually go to the lines are gonna be just the regular AN, and those the lines will just go on and tighten up. And those, the AN and the ORB fittings, we do not use Teflon tape on. It will actually help prevent it from sealing. So we wanna be able to just screw these in and tighten them up. Now the ORB fittings, they can have a flare or they can not. Like most of the fittings, um, let's see this one here that's gonna be with the ORB that goes with the check valve, it does not have an actual flare on it. It's, but if you look at the thread pattern, it actually matches that of a uh, dash eight uh, AN fitting. The ones that go into the regulator, um, some of them do have, uh, depending on where we're getting our supply from, some of them will be AN and some of them will be our ORB. It's irrelevant. Treat them all as an ORB fitting. They're not actually going to taper and bottom out on the flare here inside the regulator. They're just going to seat inside the regulator. So all of those will need a Teflon uh, washer to actually help seal that up. All right, now it's important, this has a vacuum port on it and we're actually just gonna leave this vacuum port unplugged just like you see it here, as long as you are not running a full return system. Now this system is actually designed and set up in two different ways. You can actually just bolt it right onto the factory system. So everything factory wise is there. You have your factory regulator back in the tank, you have your factory fuel pump, and this system will just simply attach on it and be a supplementary fuel system. Um, the reason that we have the check valve in there is to prevent your factory system from using the regulator or the return on this system. So it keeps both systems completely segregated from each other. Um, and the only time the secondary system comes into play is when you go under boost and it activates the hob switch, which is gonna actually turn the secondary fuel system on. Then the fuel only flows in one direction. You can set this up, however, as a full return system. What you would have to do is eliminate the uh, factory regulator in the back um, and then we would eliminate the check valve up here. At that point, you can hook up the vacuum line here to the regulator. But if you're just doing the simple, basic bolt-on supplementary system, don't hook anything up to the vacuum. Just let it be open to the atmosphere just like it is. All right, now to wire up the fuel system, it's pretty straight and simple and straightforward. Um, basically, we're gonna need a power supply. Um, generally, what we do is we tap into the lug right here on the fuse panel. Now, if you are tapping into that lug or any other source where, like directly from the battery, where it's not already fused, you do need to put a fuse in it. Uh, just a simple inline fuse. We usually use the 30 amp fuse. Um, you're not really trying to protect the pump at all. All you're trying to do is protect the circuit itself in case a uh, wire rubs through and there's a short or anything like that. Um, if you don't put a fuse in it, there is, you know, a cause for uh, a fire or burning up the, uh, the wiring and that in it. So please, if you are taking it to a non-fuse source for your power supply, make sure you put a fuse in it. So we're going to take our power supply right from the, the fuse blocks there. Um, that's going to go to our relay. Um, then from the other leg of the relay, that's our power into the relay and our power out to the relay is of course going to go to the fuel pump itself. And then from the fuel pump with the ground, we just ground out right to the frame when we mount the actual pump down there. Um, for our trigger, we're going to take a power supply. We usually take that right off of um, an ignition source such as the pink wires on the uh, fuel injectors. Um, that's going to give us our ignition source trigger for the uh, our power trigger for the relay. Um, it's only on when the key is in the on position. So if your key is off, obviously the fuel system will be off. For the negative trigger on the relay, we're going to take that from our hob switch and then to a ground. So you go from a ground source to the hob switch, um, which is what's going to give us our pressure activation on that. Um, from there, we're going to go right to the uh, negative trigger on the relay. If you guys aren't sure how the uh, relays are set up or how they work or how to wire them, um, I do have another install video on our channel um, for that. Just go ahead and search that for the how relays work, um, and it'll kind of walk you through it. Now, for the vacuum routing on our hob switch, what we're going to do, um, on this one, we basically just tied it into our existing vacuum wire coming right off the back of the throttle body here. This is the same hose that we're going to use on this. Um, for our blow-off valve or for a, uh, a boost vacuum gauge. Um, basically anything that's going to have the boost pressure there um, and be able to reference it, that's what we want to tie into. That way when it hits 5 PSI, um, it'll actually activate the system and you'll have more than double your fuel volume on there. 
Now it is important to note too, the uh, hob switches that we use are actually adjustable. They should come preset at five PSI, but if you notice it's a little high or a little low, there's a real little rubber plug in the back. You can pull that out and then you stick an Allen wrench in there. I believe it's a 3 16 um, is measurement on the Allen wrench and it's a little bit adjustable. So screwing it in it raises the boost pressure at which it activates, unscrewing it out lowers the boost pressure at which it activates. Okay, now for setting the fuel pressure, um, it comes with the gauge, it screws right into the side of the regulator here. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna manually activate the system. So we're just gonna basically jump our key the uh, ignition in the on position and we're gonna jump her across the hob switch. Um, that's gonna kick it on without the actual car running or anything flowing and we'll set our fuel pressure. Now, stock fuel pressure on the LS engines should be right about 58 PSI and that's right about where we wanna be. We're gonna be about 58 to 59 PSI. Um, that way we're not overrunning. If you crank it up a lot higher than that, you're just going to overrun the uh, factory regulator that's in the back and you can actually damage the regulator in the back. So we want to keep it right about on par. Um, that way, once the, uh, the secondary fuel system kicks on, your fuel pressure pretty much just stays constant continuously all the time. All right, now because of where we tap this in on the uh, fuel tank, um, we couldn't tap into the factory bucket, otherwise we'd drain that dry. Um, so because we tapped it on the backside, it's going to actually act kind of like a fuel cell. Um, now, when you accelerate, the fuel should slosh to the back of the tank. And that, however, we do strongly recommend make sure you have, you know, enough fuel in the system. Um, we recommend at least a minimum of a half a tank. That way, you know, there's enough fuel in it, especially with the saddle tanks. Um, what usually happen is the passenger saddle tank is going to go dry before the driver's saddle tank um, because the, the venturi is it's sucking it across. Um, so make sure you have sufficient fuel in your system before you use it. Um, otherwise, you'll be running the system dry. You'll be right relying on the uh, the fuel pressure to be there in the secondary system but if there's not any fuel that it can can suck up or if it's starving it because there's fuel sloshing around in the tank um, that'll obviously be an issue so that about does it for this install video here um, if you guys have any questions or need any help with it by all means give us a shout and uh, we'll see you next time